Uh, let's get down to the, the more specific point. Why did you choose this rather odd and something that's never been done before, this curious and debased love? Well, I think Why because on the whole, it uh, afforded me all kinds of interesting uh, possibilities. I'm, I'm not so much uh, interested in the philosophy of the book as I am in, uh, in weaving the thing in, in a certain way. Uh, in those intergradations and interweavings of certain themes and uh, sub-themes. Uh, for instance, this thematic uh, line of uh, Mr. Quilty, whom uh, Humbert will kill, and, and does kill, and whom uh, Humbert uh, mentions as early as page 33, uh, and so on. And he appears several times throughout the book. Uh, and, uh, well, uh, <coughs> putting him into the book... But you must, have, uh, you must have read a newspaper or been aware of this strange sexual s symbolism or this oddity in a minority of humans which has shocked so many people about Olita? Uh, I have read a considerable number of case histories. Uh, I uh -huh. would say that I became quite an expert uh, in those matters. Uh, I've, I have not, well, I have not combined it, combined them for the purpose of writing the book, but they have influenced me in one way or another, just giving me certain information. Mr. Trilling has a very intriguing theory about Olita. Uh, he thinks it's a return to the old kind of romantic, shocking love, but I'll let him explain it, and I'd like to hear what you have to say about it. Well, Mr. Burton, my, my, it isn't uh, quite to be dignified by calling it a theory, but my reading of the book uh, led me to feel that, despite the uh, judgments that a good many people have made on, on it as a book about sex and sexual obsession, uh, that although it is indeed a very erotic book, a very sexual book, if you wish, uh, it is, it is not a book uh, so much about an aberration as about uh, an actual love, and, and a love that uh, makes all the terrible demands that almost any love makes, certainly that any sexual love makes, but that is very full of tenderness and very full of uh, compassion as well as passion. And uh, it occurred to me to say that um, uh, this particular love, uh, that Mr. Nabokov had uh, chosen uh, as the love object of his hero, uh, a young girl, some, someone who is usually preserved from the sexual attentions of, uh, of men, uh, a very young girl of 12, as I recall, uh, because he wanted to reconstitute that uh, the shocking nature, the scandalous nature that once used to uh, attend, uh, that once used to uh, characterize uh, the famous love affairs, the, the love affairs of great stories. Do you think stories, that uh, well, love should be scandalous and is no longer scandalous? Is that well, what I, you're trying to say? I don't say? think that love should be scandalous. <laughs> I'm a very respectable man. I think that all the great love stories have, have been scandalous. They, for, for example, they have been adulterous. They have been stories not of oh, right. love between married people, but uh, uh, between uh, people who ought not be in let love. Let me interrupt you here and let Mr. Ma Nabokov have his say here. Yes, well, well, it seems to me that uh, all worthwhile novels, after all, are concerned with uh, passion, love, uh, uh, and apart from Humberts and the Nymphids, uh, there, there does exist, has always existed, in novels, uh, as well as in, um, as in life, if you take a novel, well, take Anna, Anna Karenin, you know, Tolstoy's Anna Karenin with Kitty and, and Lovin, uh, which, um, which have a relationship, you see, also in, our, in ordinary, life in Europe and America, which uh, may be termed you know, passionate love, glamorous love, uh, w within the terms of normal marriage. So we, we, have, the, we, we have that too. Yes, we I do, but th that is not... They the don't thing make books, isn't that your that, point? It, it's not called Kitty, and it's not called Levin, it's called Anna Karenina. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure that I think that Kitty and Levin are, just, are, are just as alive as, uh, as Anna is, uh, and the rather, uh, yes. well, dummy-like... Uh, Yes, but it seems to, yes uh, uh, but it seems to be that all great love affairs are tragic. Uh, well, they all end in yeah, death, yeah. Uh, as, as yours does. And, uh, well, I, I would put it that, uh, this way, that if, if, if sex, you see, is the, is the sermon made of art, uh, love is the lady of that tower. Oh, yes. uh, uh, what Mr. Trilling is saying, I think, is your book is about love and not about sex. Do I, I, I interpret And I agree with him perfectly in there. But a great many people who are shocked by this book think it is a book about sex, right? Oh, yes. Uh, but, and because it is destructive, and because, it is, uh, because the, the love is destructive or cruel or many other things, it is no less love. In fact, that is why it is love. Love is often is, is these things. I think that's because they, they, they think in clichés. For them, sex is something so well-defined 
Uh, there's a kind of gap between it and a little love. They don't know what love is, perhaps, and perhaps they don't know what sex is either. Has sex become mm -hmm. a literary cliché so that people can't recognize anything else? Uh, I'll say yes. 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 You uh, say yes. yes. And, uh, well, I have to agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you um, one fast question before we close, Mr. Nabokov. You put a word in the language, nymphet. Is this going to be your mo your monument? Do you feel <laughs> that you've accomplished something? It is a very small uh, <laughs> monument, but it is a delicate mon monument, and it is, it is pleasant to have at, um, somewhere in the garden, in the shade. It is a word that is cropping up. You must see this word starting out at you. Uh, I, I see it constantly. I see it constantly. It is a pleasant feeling. It'll be nymphet of... clothes very soon. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much, Mr. Trilling, Mr. Nabokov. Talking about Lolita.